Bags a little too heavy for her fine frame, Sally tries her best as her boss looks into other shops, forever searching for the right dress. Kayla looks over momentarily, smiling at her assistant and best friend. You ready for some, for some help now, Missy? Shut the hell up, Kelly Ann. All you do is damn shops. Damn wonder you ain't got all the damn cotton, silk, and satin ever made in the damn world in your closets. The assistant smirks. Oh, wait, you do. Looking to a security guard walking along with them, Sally dro drops both of the heavy bags with a playful huff. Mm hmm. Make your sex ass useful, she laughs, walking over to her boss lady. Both looked her wonderful chiffon creation made in a dreamy salmon pink. It's like a fantasy, baby girl. <clears throat> Sally smiles, gawking through the glass. Kelly grins, seeing a powder blue number just like it. She quickly considers that the dresses would be wonderful to meet and greet their men, to wonder to wonderful to greet their men when they arrive in Old Miss. Skirting by her assistant, Kelly arrives through the salon doors with a bounce in her step. Sally in tow, thinking about her beloved Benjamin. Hearing the shop ring bell, a small, a small bell above the door, two pretty shop girls arrive with smiles until they see Sally. <clears throat> Ma'am, um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, niggers. Uh, your girl is going to have to wait outside. No, one shop girl says with a cheeky grin. Instantly feeling as if her gut had been punched, Kelly steps right up in her right steps right in her tracks as furious as a furious fire burns through a soul just that fast. Slowly walking up to the pretty blonde, the socialite looks the woman straight in her eyes. Say that again, bitch. I fucking dare you. Kelly hisses in the woman's face, fist bold and ready to fight. Quickly diffusing the situation, another woman walks over, ushering Kelly to her fabrics and bows. Now, now, ladies, no need for ugliness, the woman says with a smile. Is your color girl? Is she your assistant? Kelly walks past, glaring back at the part girl ready to punch the saleswoman in the nose. Ask her yourself, the legendary flapper snides, expecting silk fabric. Gently with a thought, the young woman smiles cheerfully at Sally. Are you her, her assistant gal? Sally smiles instantly, seeing fire in Kelly's eyes as she throws down a piece of silk. Herself smiling, also wishing to diffuse. The young black flapper nods. Yes, am She's my missus. Your shop is wonderful indeed, ma'am. The woman smiles, the shopkeeper's daughter. Then you are as welcome to sunshine in a rose garden, hun. Shop as much as you like, she says cheerfully. Let me know if you need anything. Sally smiles brightly, though the, ca the gal part, gal word, did sting. It was pleasant enough versus being called a nigger. Walking over past white bitter looking white bitter looking lady patrons, the black woman picks up a few fabrics. As she does, two women storm out of the store, each with a huff to match their stomping feet. Standing off in a corner proudly, the shopkeeper's daughter pays each no mind. Secretly she knows who Kelly is, one of the richest women in the South, always in the society columns, with enough money to buy every dress in sight. Moving quick, showing the best in silks and satins, smart fabrics for suits and brunch outfits, the young saleswoman proves herself to be a pure joy. With care, the young woman even shows fabrics to Sally, displaying the best in chiffon and exotic taffeta, even making color suggestions that would complement the assistant's rich chocolate hue. You. Needless to say, the spirit sisters of South Carolina are deeply pleased indeed. As Kelly and Sally, mind, minds whirled around with wonder. Dinner dresses, suits, Sunday hats, and scarves. Their delicate hands graze over the most sumptuous in fabrics and, and daydreams, giggling in pure joy. New Orleans is a wonderful place. Both women will need new smashing wardrobes to match. Considering it all, the spirit sisters allow their minds to wonder till the light hearts are content. After what seems like hours of pleasure, endless possibilities, Kelly decides on 12 dresses, 6 suits, and 6 pair of shoes. Even as Sally protests, carrying a rather surprisingly large cachet of greenbacks in her favorite pocketbook, the socialite buys her friend 6 dresses, 8 suits, and a few pair of shoes to match. Walking, to the walking out the store, the women blow the well-paid shopkeeper a smile and a kiss. Kelly's security detail tugging at, both, at, at more bags and boxes than they, than they have arms. 
Even with all the joy, as the two walk down the sidewalk, Sally starts to temper her happiness somewhat, lowering her head, and not looking at any white person's eyes. The black flapper averts her gaze, not, not necessarily out of fear. The ladies have four bag toting brutes for that measure. Sally knows Kelly will flaw off the handle with the slightest offense. That's just how Kelly is when it comes to Sally. She will defend her to death. It's better to keep the peace. Along Macon Avenue, both women decide on lunch, which produces a problem of its own. Sally can only eat. Ken Sally cannot eat in the restaurants. Kelly turns to one of her handsomely beefy brutes, each in black suits. Rufus, be a dear, my love, and go fetch the car, she urges, turning with a broad smile to a curious Sally. Lord, Kelly crazy lady, what is up your sleeve? Sally laughs. Kelly takes out, takes out, takes off her big brim hat, smiling into the wonderful afternoon sun that radiates her porcelain skin, a powdery white. You'll see my little chocolate drop. And sure enough, after all the bags and hide box, hat boxes have been stored, Kelly's 1925 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost is brought around, shining with a wondrous sheen, attracting all kinds of attention. No lady should be without her rose, like a luxurious steel security blanket, wrapping the flapper in her own trappings of wealth, as well as letting others know what and who she is. Now, sit in the care love, sit in the car love, Kelly issues walking ahead. I will not be long, promise. Watching her boss wiggle away, <laughs> giggling softly as a few men tip their hats at the beauty, Sally grins at Rufus. What the hell is she up to? The beefy guard smiles. Well, ma'am, if you know Kelly, it's about to make fun of old Jim Crow in rich style. Yes, ma'am, indeed. Sure enough, after ordering enough food to feed a small village, Kelly has her guards bring the food out to the car. Since they can't eat in, eat as a family in the restaurant, might as well eat outside under God's good sunshine. And since they were, and since they were, Kelly brought a lot to share. It's rude to eat in front of people with none to spare. Soon, small children, black, Latin, and, and mix and white, they all have their hands out for hot sandwiches, potato chips, and pickles. Begrudging with smirks, Kelly's guards hand out food to, to anybody who wants, all while she and Sally enjoy their, their lunch in pure luxury. Soon, as expected, trouble dares to peek out its ugly face. Lord have mercy. The restaurant owner, of course, a hateful bastard by the name of Wilford Turner, starts a fuss about parking and distracting patriots from his business. With a scowl that looks about looks as if he's taken a whiff of his upper lip from the most of from the most for most of his life, the owner hisses insults. That is until he realizes he's being watched by four very big men with black suits, all under Kelly's employment. Ma'am, can you and your nigger please damn leave? Turner hisses, looking to a rather angry Rufus. Quickly, almost too fast, the heavy moves forward. That is, until Kelly's delicate hands rise in the air, nibbling on a sour pickle, stopping the brood in mid-step. Back in your cage, Rufus. I got this. The socialite grins, grazing the brute's chin with a small peck. Walking up to the restaurant owner, a man with a face so scowled and wrinkled, he must have spent a whole lifetime just frowning. Kelly smiles a certain way. What did you just say? She asks. His small eyes looking all around, changing his tune. Turner tries to smile. More of a f slight frown turned upside down if you ask me. Just damn disturbing. Well, take your niggers and leave them in front of my restaurant. You're scaring away my customers. Watching several other people walk in, each admiring her autom aut automobile, Kelly nods her head. Looks like we are attracting customers instead of scaring them away. Mad as damn not, you and your nigger need to go, and that damn fancy car of yours, the man snides. Instantly, Kelly turns in midst of about to actually leave. Walking back, inch from the man from the man's face, the socialite smiles. Say that again, please. And sure enough, right as a hateful eatery forms his lips to say one of the most derogatory insults aimed at black people and women to boot, the man feels a hard, hot slap across his face, nearly making him stumble back. You fucking crazy nigger lover! The man howls right as Kelly steps forward. Pow! Darkness. The man falls to the pavement, knocked out cold. As onlookers gasp and awe, Kelly shakes her small gloved hand, feeling it already swell. Fucking backwards bastard! She smarts as Rufus and his team move forward. Betcha I broke a damn nail! 
quickly packed into the car as more onlookers gather. Sally and Kelly are skirted off down Hoover Road, but not before attracting the attention of the police who pulled the silver luxury car over. Nearly making out of, nearly making out of town on, along a lonely highway, Kelly giggles all while Sally looks about as frightened as a cat in a room full of stray dogs. A stark difference in circumstances when dealing with the police in Mississippi, depending on one's skin color, of course. Watching a rather fat officer walk up, the blonde flapper pits, out her, pits on her best face. Peering into the luxury sedan, the lawman scowls when seeing Sally. Ma'am, you hit old Wilford? The officer, the officer asks, looking back down the lonely road leading back to town. <clears throat> Kelly pits on the charm as well as, well as an innocent face, something she's very good at. Officer, uh, <clears throat> he felt on my booty, my backside. What was I to do? The flapper asks coyly. Glaring from Kelly, the officer visually leers, visually leers at Sally's, seeing that the young woman is already scared out of her skin. They said you hit Turner for your nigger. Suddenly, Kelly's eyes turn to beat red, having to sit on her hands before she hits the bastard in his face, peering over at her befuddled bodyguards. The officer backs up from the fine car as he spits on the dusty road, wiping tobacco juice from his angry thin lips from the back of his sleeve. Admiring the rose shimmering, nearly stainless steel color, the lawman leers back to a nearly tearful Sally. Time to take matters in his own hands as, as he's often done on the colored side of town so many times before. Smitty is a mean man, like water is wet and gasoline is dangerous around lit matches. It's just a fact. Evil is as death is. The bastard is even as evil as death is, the bastard is even meaner. A third generation lawman, Smitty has the temper of a bull with a, mouth, with, a mouth full, with a mouth full of hot peppers with just as much common sense. A bad combination for a man who has no who has control of other people's lives. Sally, watching out the side of her eye, sees the officer walk behind the car. Kelly, gripping her hand as hard as she can, tries to assure her friend that everything will be fine. You're safe, my beloved, the, sound, the socialite whispers. If I have to, I'll kill this bastard. Then so be it. I'ma do what I gotta do. The flapper looks to her men, all four of them looking to each other, willing to die for a woman that has been kinder to them the most. But they also know that their hands are tied as well. Turning slowly like a snake ready to strike, Kelly watches the officer make his way around to Sally's side, staring at the back of her car. The bully is purposely trying to unsettle everyone. Like a shark surveying his prey before the feast, the, officer, the officer's moments outside the car are meant to scare. As Sally starts to tremble, already thinking of the hard stories she's been told by relatives about old Mississippi, Kelly slightly raises the hem of her dress. Sally sees a 45 pearl handle in her hand, ready. Nigga, get out of here! Now! The officer yells from the back of the car. Trembling, Sally knows what to do, suddenly steadying herself. Kelly eyes her protege with a steely grin. You get that fear out of your gut, baby girl. You remember, you're one of us. Blood in, blood out. The flapper whispers as her bodyguards look on furiously. They only need the bat of Kelly's eyelash and they would be out of the cars and faster than Robin's out of hell. Looking down, Sally watches as Kelly slides over the, as, over the embellished two-seater. The assistant steadies herself even more as the spirit sisters look to each other knowingly. Nigga, don't make me say it again. The bastard in the uniform yells from outside the car, his mouth foaming like a rabbit dog. Already feeling his nature get hard, the animalistic lawman has not had his fill of raped brown skin today. Might as well start early. A great way to show the uppity blonde bitch that this is a man's world, no matter how rich she is. In the car, somehow stronger, feeling the pretty gun in her hand, Sally slides out her seat as she opens the door of the sedan. Instantly, the door feels as if it's made of lead, eased open as the hot summer air floats through the assistant's pressed and curled hair, flowing into her gentle brown eyes. Looking to the back of the, of the luxury sedan, the black flapper sees